Ziggy and Rachel, written by Michael Rispoli and Greg Greenberg. Exterior, 980 Park Avenue, continuous. Jose hustles onto a busy Park Avenue, blowing his whistle. A yellow cab screeches to a halt, coming within an inch of Jose's knees. Jose guides Mrs. Hirsch into the cab. Have a nice evening. Jose shuts the door and hits the top of the taxi. As the taxi takes off, Jason Ziggy Einzig, 11, arrives in front of the building on his bicycle. Ziggy wears a Mets jersey and bicycle helmet. His helmet is covered with Mets player stickers. His bicycle is decked out with faded baseball comic decals. On the front and rear forks of his tires, he has baseball cards clipped in place with a clothespin. Ziggy loves the motorcycle-like hum the cards make as they drag across the revolving spokes. In a world awash in technology, Ziggy is content with the simpler things. Jose spots him. Hey, Ziggy. You just missed your father. He went up to the 15th floor to help Sinclair. Where you been? Hitting the nightclubs? I can't go to nightclubs. I'm only 11. Jose smiles. That's right. You've got plenty of time then. More importantly, did you get my DeGrom card? Ziggy pulls out a new Topps Jacob DeGrom baseball card. Hey, man. Okay. I told you five Mets for one DeGrom, right? Jose reaches into his doorman coat and hands Ziggy five baseball cards. Ziggy looks them over. You said five Mets. That's what I gave you. Five Mets. Flores is not a Met anymore. He got traded. Jose, bested, gives Ziggy one more Met from the stash of baseball cards in his pocket. You drive a hard bargain. Hey, you want to do the Lobby 500? Nobody's going to complain. They'd have to catch you first. Ziggy smiles. Count to 15 and let it fly. Jose enters the building. Interior, 980 Park Avenue, lobby, continuous. Jose checks the lobby to see if the coast is clear. Then he makes a quick break to the elevators and presses the down button. He clocks the floor lights above the elevator, 9, 8, 7, 6, as he times its descent. He is all stealth as he inches his way back to the front door, keeping his eyes on the floor lights, 5, 4, 3, 2, he suddenly throws open the front door and in rushes Ziggy, pedaling his bike furiously across the marble floor towards the elevators, the baseball cards against his spokes clacking like the fine-tuned pistons of a racing bike tearing across the salt flats. It looks like he's going to crash into the elevator doors, but just as he gets within a few bike lengths, it dings, the doors open, Ziggy skids inside, and the door closes. Perfect timing for the Lobby 500. Yes! Then, an Asian man holding a Chinese food delivery bag enters the building. Whoa, wait a second, my friend. Which apartment are you going to? 8A. Food coming up. Jose returns to his podium and picks up the phone. Interior, 980 Park Avenue basement, hallway, continuous. Elevator doors open and Ziggy emerges with his bike. He walks down a cement corridor bathed in fluorescent light passing by storage closets, the staff locker room, a laundry room, and the boiler room in the bowels of the building. He reaches the last door at the end of the hallway. This is where he lives. He leans his bike against the wall, takes off his helmet, and sets it on the bicycle seat. He reaches inside his shirt and fishes out the apartment key hanging on a chain around his neck, and he puts the key in the lock. Interior, 980 Park Avenue Basement, Einzig Apartment, Continuous. The Einzig apartment is a modest two-bedroom building manager's apartment, spare, utilitarian, and lacking in natural sunlight. Still, there is a warmth and coziness to the apartment due to the three generations of bachelor Einzig men who live there. Who's there? It's okay, Pop-Pop. It's just me. I said, who's there? It's just me. Me who? Ziggy enters the living room. Stan Einzig, a youthful 75, sits in his well-worn lazy boy watching TV. His face brightens, and his eyes sparkle when he sees his grandson, Ziggy. He wears his ever-present Yankees hat. On the side table next to his chair is a large glass bowl, a terrarium. In it is Stan's pet-painted turtle, Zeke. Zeke's habitat reflects the same utilitarian warmth and coziness of the Einzig apartment. Close-up of Zeke turning his head, responding to Ziggy's voice. The guy on first base. Who? The fellow playing first base. Who's on first? What are you asking me for? I don't know. Third base! Ziggy gives his grandfather a kiss, reaches in the terrarium, and pets Zeke. Hey, Zeke. Then he picks up the remote. Who starts for the Mets tonight? I don't know. Me and Zeke don't pay attention to the minor leagues. Ziggy smiles at his grandfather's wisecrack. You excited for tomorrow? Ziggy just shrugs his shoulders. I'll make you some dinner. Stan heads to the kitchen. 
Ziggy jumps into his grandfather's Lazy Boy and switches channels. Zeke stares through the terrarium glass at the TV.